So, here we see that this function has uh, rho has support in this closed unit ball. So, by dilation or scaling we can uh, shift the support to any ball of our choice and this is done by dilation. So, for epsilon positive define rho epsilon of x is equal to rho of x by epsilon and now the support of rho epsilon is the ball closure of the ball with radius epsilon. Okay. So, if we just write it here, so this is uh, C epsilon, uh, no, no, I, sh I should maybe with it just because I want this integral to be again uh, to be uh, 1. So, this there may be a constant here. So, let me just check that. Uh, here it is. So, for the timing I will just put it here C epsilon. Okay. So, this actually let me write this as uh, this C by epsilon n uh, into this exponential minus epsilon square by epsilon square minus mod x square if mod x is less than epsilon and 0 if mod x is bigger than equal to epsilon. So, in all these cases we just see that rho epsilon x d x is also 1. So, this is important to maintain this Okay. So, if you draw few uh, figures of this, so starting with minus 1 and 1, okay. so let me just go for another color. So, minus half for example. I am just uh, showing uh, one dimensional picture. Okay, so this, so this one will be like that. So this is row half, and uh, the row will be. little lower ok. So, sorry for that ok. This is rho. So, as epsilon becomes closer and closer this peak will uh, <coughs> go up and up. So, as an exercise, so it is interesting to see that. So, later on you see the delta function, uh, but before that you can verify so, the little exercise here. It's good exercise. So, so we learn lots of lots about analysis, and that is the uh, heart of this course. So, if f is any function.
continuous uh, near 0 near x equal to 0 then limit as epsilon tends to 0 this rho epsilon x f x o is equal to f of z. So, you see always uh, already the nature of uh, averages these mollifiers do. Okay. And now, we use uh, <coughs> these uh, mollifiers to show that C infinity functions uh, with compact support are dense in uh, LP. Okay. So, before that, so often we require to construct test functions. So, that you will see in this course a lot uh, which have some required properties. So, at times we want that test function to be to take the value 1 on a prescribed set and 0 elsewhere, but maintain that it is C infinity. Okay. So, such a uh, test function can be constructed in general again using these mollifiers. Okay. So, let me just mention uh, one result in this direction. Okay. So, if A is any subset of R n, okay. so define the epsilon neighborhood of A. Okay. So, we are defined for epsilon neighborhood of a point, but for set also you can define. Okay, so this is just a plus b zero epsilon. So you translate every point in a by this open ball. So this you can write it as uh, precisely. Okay, so this so set of all points in uh, R n which have distance from A the set A less than epsilon. Okay. Geometrically you can just see that this suppose this is A. Okay. So, A epsilon will be use okay, this is A epsilon including A of course. Okay. So, that is uh, just translating every point by. Okay. So, now we can state this uh, result. So, as I said, so many of this uh, results will not be proved, these are prerequisites, but just mention or sketch wherever possible. Okay. So, just let me write it as a theorem. So, for any set A in R n, and epsilon greater than 0. So, you just these are the prescribed quantities. So, there exists eta which is a C infinity function <coughs> with compact support. Uh, okay. So, let me state that as part of the conclusion such that so, you will see that it is has compact support. So, eta let me write it eta epsilon. So, that depends on epsilon. So, eta epsilon x 
is equal to 1 for x in A epsilon that epsilon neighborhood of the set A and eta uh, epsilon x is 0 for x not belonging to. So, a bigger set so you take 3 epsilon okay. and important thing so it is bounded less than or equal to 1 and this important estimates. So, you will see the usefulness of these estimates when we go to PDs. M alpha for all multi indices. Okay, so let me just quickly recall this uh, multi index notation. So, maybe here. So, a multi index is an n tuple. Okay, so, this alpha 1, alpha n and alpha i's are always non-negative integers okay. uh, and d alpha is d by d x 1 alpha 1 etcetera d by d x n. So, these are partial derivatives. Okay. So, we also use another notation. So, if x is in R n, uh, x alpha is x 1 alpha 1 etcetera x n alpha n. Okay. So, this is standard notations. So, we will be using that. Okay. So, this uh, these are very very important estimates. Okay. So, often we use this theorem for a compact set in R n. Okay. So, that is uh, uh, so how this is proved this is I just uh, mentioned what is this eta epsilon. Uh, function. So, then you can verify yourself all these conditions. Okay. So, this eta epsilon x is integral in R n. The characteristic function of a 2 epsilon okay, and rho epsilon x minus y t 1. So, you see the usefulness of the mollifiers straight way. Okay. So, I just comment here. So, you can just verify uh, all the properties by using this expression. Uh, just a comment about the integral. So, even if A is an infinite set and since the support of this function, okay, so this let me write that support is equal to B x epsilon. Okay, uh, closer. Okay, so, the integrand is the domain of the integral is always a compact set. Okay. So, even if it is so integral this integrand consists of functions of uh, mul multiplication of two functions. So, the domain is the common support. So, since one function has compact support automatically the domain of integration is finite even though if 
uh, the set may be an infinite set. Okay. So, this characteristic function may not have compact support, but yet this integral is always finite. Okay. So, rest you can verify directly from this definition. So, corollary. So, if k is any compact subset of R n, R n R 1 omega. So, let me just uh, is compact. So, often we use this notation instead of writing all the time k is compact compact. So, we use uh, so this means k is a compact subset of omega. Uh, so, omega is an open set in R n uh, then there exists a C infinity function. in R n of course, uh, such that. So, 0 eta less than equal to 1 and eta equal to 1 on k and ok. So, the other things we need not state ok. So, so here you have to just take. So, if omega has finite boundary. So, you just take 1 by 4 distance between the compact subset and the boundary. Okay. So, so omega is here. So, this is del omega, this is omega and compact subset is here. So, if omega is unbounded, uh, for example, if omega is R n, so take R large enough uh, such that k is contained in B 0 R. So, in that case you take epsilon equal to quarter of the distance between k and the sphere. Okay. So, this let me write that sphere and another notation. So, S 0 r is nothing but set of all x in r n mod x equal to r. Okay. So, now we show <coughs> that the C infinity functions with compact support are dense in L p. Okay. So, let 1 less than equal to p less than infinity and f in L p omega. Okay. So, define f uh, epsilon x is equal to rho epsilon star f. So, let me again uh, <coughs> write this thing. So, d y. Okay. So, rho epsilon being uh, a function of C infinity function of compact support uh, is in every L p. So, we can easily check that epsilon is in L p. 
Okay. Uh, so, sometimes these f epsilons are also called mollifiers of the function f. Mollifiers of So, I uh, missed one fact about uh, again convolutions. Okay. So, if f is a uh, C m function in omega also L 1 omega and g in L 1 omega and also this d alpha f in L 1 omega. Okay. So, this implies this f star g is also differentiable and this is just given by d alpha f. So, this is an important property of the convolution. So, if one of the functions defining the convolution is smooth with this derivative again in L 1. So, we can transform the derivatives of f star g to that function. So, it is sufficient that one of them be uh, <coughs> smooth. Okay. So, in our case uh, this rho epsilon is c infinity function. Okay. So, it just this implies that straight way. Okay. So, this epsilon is c infinity. So, this being the convolution of these two functions rho epsilon and f and d alpha f epsilon is star f. So, we are not going to use right now this uh, important thing, but we are just going to use that this <coughs> So, we want to show. So, this is the theorem. F epsilon is in L p norm of see this approximations. So, uh, under our control. Okay. So, this is very important in applications and f epsilon converges to f in L p. Okay. So, I have just omega is all already understood. Okay. So, that is okay. so this means norm of f epsilon minus f tends to 0 as epsilon. Okay, let me briefly indicate the proof. Proof is not really hard once we use the fact that the continuous functions are dense in. Uh, L p. Okay, so, this so sketch. So, let me just okay, so, so if p is equal to 1 okay, so, this f epsilon x is less than or equal to integral rho epsilon x minus y f of y dy. 
Okay. So, let me not bother to write the domain it is understood it is this <coughs> ball of radius epsilon centered at x. Okay. So, now you integrate with respect to integrate with respect to x this inequality and use Fubini theorem. So, here we are using the fact that this rho epsilon is a non negative function use Fubini's theorem. Okay, so, integral mod f epsilon x dx is less than or equal to integral mod f y dy and this rho epsilon x minus y dx. Okay, so, I am already using Fubini theorem, but this is equal to 1 and this is just norm of f is 1. So, this is norm of epsilon. Okay, so, when p is bigger than 1, we use uh, Holder's inequality. Okay, so, that is uh, <coughs> so, f epsilon x. So, what we are going to do is, so since rho epsilon is a positive function, so this I write it as 1 minus 1 by p x minus y rho epsilon 1 by p okay. So, less than I write like that. So, using Hulder's inequality you see that this is rho epsilon x minus y dy to the power 1 by q and this is just rho epsilon x minus y mod f y to the power p dy and whole power 1 by q. So, this is 1 by p plus 1 by q is 1. Okay. So, this is simply the Hulder's inequality. Now, take p -th power take p -th power both sides uh, integrate with respect to x same procedure and use Fubini. Use Fubini. So, you just get that same computation as uh, the case p equal to 1 except for this uh, little arrangement. Okay. So, you just p. So, as you see more and more p d s you will appreciate this bounds. Okay. So, next consider so, now we are going to prove that uh, the other part just namely we are going to show this uh, this part f f epsilon converges to f. So, you will also see the techniques what generally employed in uh, this analysis of PDE, uh, we will do it so many times. Okay. So, we want to show that this absolute value to the power p that tends to 0. 
right that is what we want to show ok. So, this the first step we write is this rho epsilon x minus y uh, f of y minus f of x uh, x d y. Why you can write like, the, like this? So, the main property we are using of rho epsilon that its integral is 1. Okay, so, just to, so repeatedly we are using that. Hmm. So, we can bring this f x term inside the integral. Okay. So, <coughs> again let me not bother about writing the domain of the integral. So, that is uh, that is fine. So, looking at this thing. So, now you realize. So, if f is a continuous function of compact support. So, we can control this by uniform continuity of f. Okay, so, that is what. So, the again use the uh, same computation as we did earlier. So, that implies f epsilon x minus f x to the power p is less than or equal to integral rho epsilon x minus y Okay. So, now we want to integrate with respect to x and show that that tends to 0. So, <coughs> uh, so first assume okay. so there are some gaps here in the argument. So, you uh, should fill in first assume f has f is continuous and has compact support. Okay. So, in this case it is very easy. Okay. So, use uniform continuity because it has compact support. Okay. So, a continuous function on a compact set is uniformly use uniform continuity to show that uh, f epsilon minus f p tends to 0 as epsilon tends to 0. The general case follows from density arguments. Follows from density arguments. I strongly suggest that you should work out these two steps in detail and convince yourself that the proof works out. Okay. So, that is very important. So, in fact, we are going to leave such small arguments uh, for yourself to check throughout this course, because if we keep on doing these things then we require a lot more time uh, to explain everything. Okay. So, you should uh, do along with us. Okay. So, just we are hinting it, but you should work out all the details. Okay. So, we will see next time we will continue with 
some more discussion on LP spaces and uh, uh, describe the compact subsets of LP spaces. Thank you.